They say that music is a creative endeavor, so let's use our imagination. You've heard of normal time signatures, you've heard of odd time signatures, irrational time signatures, even negative time signatures, but today I want to talk about what I think imaginary time signatures would be like if you did them, and I'm going to do them, so it's like what they will be like when I do them. Ha ha ha. I cannot find anywhere on the entire internet using Google that talks about imaginary time signatures, so I might have actually finally found something that nobody else has done before. Let's hope I can get this video out before Adam Neely does it. So before we can actually get into imaginary time signatures, we should probably know what imaginary time is. So here is your real number line, and this is what we'd use to talk about real time. You know, we, there's three spatial dimensions in addition to this that we live in, but we have one dimension of time. It's uh, rather convenient, right? We have one dimension of time, and we move along, and if you have a song or a measure, because that's what time signatures are really talking about, is a measure, right? If you have a measure, it would take up some amount of time, some duration on the real axis. Now, of course, drumming with only one drumstick isn't very common, so here is the imaginary axis. Ooh, what does this do? This makes the complex plane. So the complex plane is just a plane of numbers. They're just values. They're not actually, it's not actually like there's an x-axis and a y-axis. There's a real axis and an imaginary axis, but this is just a good way to visually represent complex numbers. So what are complex numbers? Complex numbers are a combination of real and imaginary numbers. So, for instance, if this is 1 and this is the square root of negative 1, which which we call i. Okay, so this is 1 and this is i. By the way, the imaginary axis is measured in multiples of i, so you'd have i, 2i, 3i, and then negative i, negative 2i, etc. Okay, this is 1, this is i. This point right here would be called 1 plus i. Complex numbers normally take the form of a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers, and i is the imaginary constant, the square root of negative 1. So imaginary time is time that flows perpendicular to the real time axis, and this means that an entirely imaginary measure, for instance, would exist only on this imaginary axis, and it would actually have zero length in real time, so it would be completely imperceptible. What this means is that we're not actually looking for purely imaginary time signatures, we're looking for complex numbers to describe our time signatures. I say complex numbers to describe our time signatures instead of just complex time signatures, because while that might be correct mathematically, there's a lot of mathematical terms that apply to time signatures quite differently than they do in actual normal math. So something like irrational, an irrational time signature, has nothing to do with irrational numbers necessarily. I mean, if the denominator was an irrational number, then that would be an irrational time signature because irrational numbers are not powers of two. Uh, but you could actually have an irrational number as the numerator, but if the denominator is a power of two, that's still a rational time signature. So there's definitely some discrepancies there, but in this case, we're really talking about complex numbers when we say complex time signature. So there's two ways that you can actually use complex numbers uh, to interpret what you're going to play in terms of a time signature, one of which I think is much more interesting than the other. Um, so I actually want to use this to represent the song. Uh, so imagine that the imaginary axis is still there. So here's our song, right? So one way of thinking about it is just using imaginary numbers or complex numbers to define some sort of rotation into the complex plane. But all that's going to do is just make the song sound like it's faster. It's just a faster tempo. So that's not very interesting. The much more interesting way, I think, is to look at it as the time signature affecting measures individually, because that's what time signatures really do, right? They could describe the whole song, but they don't have to, right? You, you could have every single measure in a song be a different time signature, because time signatures apply to measures, not songs. So, if we take every individual measure, and I can't really use this because this is supposed to be the whole song, but if we take every single individual measure and rotate it itself, what we get is that each individual measure will speed up by some amount, but they will become disconnected. Let me say that again. The measures will no longer be connected to one another. Isn't that the coolest thing ever? It's so cool. Okay, let's get into actually how we'll implement this and how we can interpret a number as part of a time signature, which is a complex number. 
So let's say we had something like four plus eight i in our numerator. What that means, okay? Let's get the uh, let's get the axes here. Okay, so eight i is somewhere like there maybe, and four is something like here. So four plus eight i is a number that exists right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the absolute value of that, which happens to be about 8.94. It's just Pythagorean theorem. It's the distance from zero. Remember how you learned that absolute value is the distance from zero? It's like, well, why can't we just say it's the positive version of the number? Because when it comes to complex numbers, that distance from zero needs to be taken a lot more literally. So that absolute value of 8.94 is actually how many beats we're going to play. Right? Because we actually have to know how many beats am I playing in this measure. Well, the absolute value of the numerator is actually always the way you do that. Now, what that absolute value is, is, is really important. So yeah, that's what's telling us how many beats we're actually going to play. But, the amount of actual time that we take to play it is only going to be four beats because that's the real component of our time signature. So the real amount of time that it takes to play a measure will be four. But the number of beats that we actually play during that time will be 8.94, roughly. So, this leaves space between the measures, right? Because if that's the absolute value, this is how long there is between each measure. Like, between, like here's the start of one measure, the start of the next measure, or I guess going this way, right? Okay. But, we only play the measure for this long, so there's space between them, so they're not, they're not connected anymore. So the first one I want to actually try is 3 plus 4i, because 3 plus 4i has an absolute value of 5, which is quite a convenient absolute value, because that's the, you know, a whole number of beats that we can actually play. But remember, we're playing those 5 beats in the space of 3 beats at the tempo, because the real component is 3. So. Let's do it. Three plus four I is not my favorite, I gotta say, because I, I feel like there's too much space and it just feels, I mean, obviously it's gonna feel disjointed. That's, that's always gonna happen, but there's so much space, almost half the measure is space. And you know, my orchestra teacher always says, uh, you gotta play your rests, because people will step in rests and it'll be like, you gotta play your rests. But in this case, those aren't actually rests, are they? That, that beat had no rests in it. It had pauses, and those pauses were part of the song, but they weren't part of the measures. So they weren't rests, which is really weird. And I mean, like, practically, yeah, they're rests, but in theory, they're not. Anyway, um, yeah, I think we should try 4 plus 3i, because that won't have as much pause in it. And I think I'll try a little bit of a different style. So, uh, yeah, let's try that. One question I have that doesn't really need to be answered, but it's interesting, is if you were writing this in notation, I'm not using notation, in fact I'm actually using an older version of FL Studio because the, the newest version has time signatures, but that doesn't actually work with this very well, so it's, it's actually much easier to do this in an older version that doesn't have time signatures, that's how weird this time signature is, right? Uh, but if you were notating it, and you had a note that was tied across the bar line, would you sustain the note through that, that segment of time where the measures don't exist, right? Because this is like, this is the weird thing about it, is that you have points, you have, you have segments of time where there aren't any measures, but the song still exists. It's just the measures don't exist. It's super weird, right? But um, would you play those? I think you would. I think you would play those because it just makes sense. That might be a way to get some sound into those pockets of what are currently silence. You couldn't ever initiate a new note. You couldn't ever have an attack 
during, uh, during that, and you couldn't ever have a release during that either. So the only things that you can ever have are either silence or sustain during those pockets. You can never end a note or begin a note because ending and beginnings of notes are in measures. Those are, you would have to notate that and you can't notate anything in the, in the middle of that, but you can notate that you should play through it. So it's like, yeah, that's a thing. Okay, I think the next thing we should try is 2 plus 2i. Two um, it looks nice, right? 2 plus 2i two is like, you know, nice twos, it's the same number twice or whatever. The absolute value is the square root of 8, so that's interesting. Um, and that turns out to be about 2.83. Um, I didn't just calculate that in my head, I don't know why I was like, that turns out to be about mm, 2.83, yeah. So. That'll be interesting. Uh, we're supposed to be playing 2.83 beats. Now, there's virtually infinite ways to conceptualize that. The way I'm gonna conceptualize it is probably something like one and two and, and then that last bit is gonna be special. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I'm not actually even sure how I'm going to make this on, on the computer. I certainly can't play it live. Um, I'll figure something out. So I did the math for 2 plus 2i. It's really interesting. Um, I'll link a video in the description, an unlisted video, if you want to see me go through the math, but I won't go through it here. Uh, the bottom line is I had to make some rational approximations. Please keep your pitchforks stowed. They're pretty close, okay? It's probably imperceptibly different from what the actual irrational numbers would sound like, but I approximated it such that we have essentially 17 16th note triplets as the part where we can play notes, and then we have 7.04 16th note triplets where you can't do anything, you can't start or end a note. Now, what's interesting, and you might have just realized this, 17 plus 7 is 24, and it's just, you know, 17 plus 7.04. That .04, that's the 64th note triplet that's almost imperceptible. What's 24 16th note triplets? That's a whole note. So this basically feels like 4-4. Four, four. It's super weird. It's 4-4 four, four where you can't do anything during beat 4, is, is kind of what it turned into. So, enjoy. Thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoyed that. I know I certainly enjoyed the music that we got out of it. The 2 plus 2i beat especially, I really like that now. You know, it just sounds like 4-4 four, four chill hip hop, I get it, but it came from 2 plus 2i, and, and that's kind of the point, right? This is, I mean, <laughs> imaginary time signatures were never going to be about practicality, right? So uh, the fact that it came from that and that there's all that fun theory behind it is really cool to me. So, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you like the way that my music sounds, I have a bunch of music on Spotify and iTunes and that kind of stuff. And if you like the way I make videos, I have a bunch of other videos. So there you go, more stuff. Um, you know, I don't have the best camera or the best audio or the most experience or really anything, uh, but I have some cool ideas sometimes. So anyway, <laughs> feel free to check out my other stuff. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.